Department of Pharmaceutical Chemistry, Kelly College of Pharmacy, Kelly Academy of Higher Education, Delagavi. So today we will discuss about how uh, discuss about how to perform the limit test for iron. So before that, we will see what is impurity. Impurity is any substance which alters with the purity of pharmaceutical substance. To check the impurity, we perform the limit test. So what is limit test? Limit test is qualitative analysis which is performed to identify the impurities present in the pharmaceutical substance. So the requirement for our experiment is we require Nestle cylinder. So this is the Nestle cylinder and this is the 50 ml Nestle cylinder. Then we require samples. So we'll be taking two samples here, sample A and sample B. There is a standard solution. The standard solution is prepared by using uh, by using the procedure which is prescribed in the eye cream. Then we require the chemicals. This is thioglycic acid, thioglycic acid. Then we require citric acid twenty percent, and then we require ammonia solution. Now we have the eye taken two stands here. So one will be I will be using for the sample A, and another I will be using for sample B. So let's understand the principle for uh, limit test of iron. So what is the principle for this limit test is when if the impurity present in the pharmaceutical substance, that impurity we have to identify. How we can identify is when we suppose iron impurity present in the pharmaceutical substance, we'll be using the citric acid, hydroxylic acid, and ammonia. So when if impurity is present, it will react with the hydroxylic acid. As you can see in the reaction, when it reacts with the hydroxylic acid, it forms a complex. That complex is ferrous hydroxylic, and that complex is actually shows color in the alkaline so that is the reason we will be using ammonia solution then another chemical which we are using is citric acid the reason is if ferrous ions are present it will react there is a chance that it will react with the ammonia solution and it will form ferrous hydroxide uh, ferrous hydroxide and so to prevent that we are using citric acid so let's begin with the experiment so uh, what we'll be doing is we'll be performing the preparation for standard solution and the preparation of for sample solution simultaneously. And I will be performing the uh, experiment for sample A and sample B uh, simultaneously. So I'll take the sample A at this stand I will use for sample A and this I will use for sample B. So let's take the sample. Now we have to take the two ml standard solution in each nasal cylinder. So I'll take uh, standard solution. So, now we have to take thioglycic acid, then citric acid and then ammonia. When we add ammonia solution, we have to check that solution should convert into the basic condition. Why we have to check that? Because amount of ammonia should make that solution alkaline. Why? Because the ferrous thioglycic complex will show the purple color in the alkaline medium. So this, after addition of the chemicals, all the chemicals, we have to stir all the solutions here and I am using all to stir the solution different stirrers. Why I am using different stirrers is that solution should not mix with the standard solution. So stir the solutions and after stirring it, what we have to do is we have to keep it for 5 minutes to develop its color. And when purple color, if we see that development of purple color, we have to add the water and make up the volume in 50 ml. So we'll wait here for 5 minutes. Yes. Now we can see here the color is developed. So now we have to do the observation. We have to compare the standard Nestle cylinder along with the sample Nestle cylinder. So uh, this as per the mention, uh, this is sample A and this we have used for sample B solution and we can see color is developed. So what we can see here is the color which is formed in the sample is actually more intense than the standard solution. And here it is the color which is formed in the sample B actually there is no color but the color which is formed in the standard solution is actually more intense than the sample solution. So what observation we get here is this in the sample color of the uh, uh, color of the solution is higher and in the sample the color of the sample is less than the standard. So we conclude here and our result will be the sample A is fails the limit test 
for the iron and sample B passes the limit test for iron. Now there is a note to take here is uh, the solution or sample solution if it has a color which is high, highly intense that is standard solution then it shows that the amount of iron is present iron, amount of iron present in the sample is more and so that the more number of complex is formed and that shows the higher intensity of the color and here there are less number of iron uh, ferrous ions in the sample so the color is not generated or less color is generated so it actually shows the sample B is passes the limit test so less number of ferrous ions are present so this can be go for the further process in the industry or for the manufacturing or formulation and this sample is to be used to reduce the content of ions of impurity so we have discussed here how to perform the limit test and we have learned how to perform the limit test and also we have uh, we have discussed is how the limit test is